And we're here to talk about driveways. Driveways can be dangerous for children. Or little red monsters. But it's important for parents to always watch their children around them. Yeah, driveways are for cars, not for planes. That's right, Elmo. Play only in safe places away from driveways because people in cars may not see you. Uh, Elmo sees you, Maria. Tag, you're it. Oh, here I come, <laughs> Elmo. Remember, driveways are like roads. Always supervise, separate, and see. Learn more at kidsafevic.com.au. Your club, Craigie Burns Sporting Club. The Sporty is now your prime function venue. The breathtaking new function room is now open. Already it's hosted wedding receptions, engagement parties, christenings, birthdays and seminars. Up to 300 guests. And the reviews have been awesome. Why not make an appointment with the Sporty Function team to plan your special occasion? Craigie Burns Best Functions are now happening at the Sporty. Craigie Burns Sporting Club. Find out more at craigieburnsc.com.au. Correct Wing is Sunday's racing review. A late break, well supported, and the punters get the money in the last. Great day as uh, Elisa Hinch settling up a, a late break. Look, it was unbelievably dark, but I know this horse inside and out, and the worse the conditions get, the better he goes, and he loves the rain, so it got worse and worse. Our smiles just got bigger and bigger. This Sunday, Brendan Delaney and David Gately will join me for the full wrap of finals day at Flemington. RSN 927's Correct Wing, Sunday morning from 8. Thanks to the Tab. Who are you backing? The winter issue of Ladies in Racing magazine is out now with Winx on the cover. Inside, an eight-page Winx special packed with stories and photos. Plus, stories on the Wakeful Club's Lady of Racing, jockey Christine Pauls, Jamie Carr, and Harness Racing's fearless Reigns women. Ladies in Racing, for those who love the glamour and stories of females in racing. Six issues, starting with the winter edition, for only $59, including postage in Australia. Call 1300 783 112 or see Ladies in Racing magazine.com.au. What a week we had on the Late Show. Well, first there was Monday, then there was Tuesday, then there was... No, seriously, we had a great week. Great guests, good fun, the Culinary World Cup. We did it all this week, and if you missed any of it, you can check it out on the podcast part of the website. Make sure you do that. Enjoy your weekend. I'm going to rest up and then be back uh, with a vengeance. 11 o'clock, Monday night. Hope to see you then. On RSN 927. When footy's done and dusted, the Weekend Footy Wrap, Monday mornings at 10. It's the round in review from the footy punter's point of view. Andrew Cuse and Adam White deliver the Weekend Footy Wrap, Monday mornings at 10, and then on podcast. Get back to work. But I am working. What, your latest Instagram post? I'm lodging a free Dial Before You Dig inquiry online. Visit 1100.com.au to use this free service or call 1100 during business hours. The smell of baking. Routley's Bakery is so good. Why not grab a Routley slice to go with your coffee? Make it a classic apple slice, a bee sting, or a vanilla slice. That's absolute custard heaven. You can make a move on a muffin or go all the way and bite into a wicked Nutella donut. Routley's Bakery is right across Geelong as well as Eltona, Newport, Williamstown and Ascot Vale. Fancy a Routley's pie? Oh, of course you do. RSN 927 conducts competitions almost every day. Every contest is run according to our general competition rules. There are even competitions which have specific terms and conditions. If you would like to read our general competition rules or any special terms and conditions, look for the links on the competitions page at rsn.net.au or ask for a copy during business hours at the RSN 927 reception desk. Or SN Carnival 2. It's women's Aussie rules are doing what they love. The fast and tough don't mess with them because they can get rough. Are you ready for the challenge? Are you ready for the match? It's the call of the game. It's the VFL Women's Match of the Day. On our SN Carnival. It's the Indeed it is the BFL Women's Match of the Day here on RSN Carnival 2 Digital Radio by WARFradio.com, the VFL app, and also via facebook.com forward slash WARF radio you're able to watch a live stream of this game so if you've just joined us on the radio call and you want to watch the vision go to our Facebook page search for Women's Australian Rules Football Radio or just type in facebook.com forward slash 
W A R F Radio to be able to watch the vision of Essendon and Collingwood, our round now in game, but just about to get underway. We can see Essendon in their huddle at the moment just with their last minute instructions. Collingwood just stopping from their warm up now to get into their huddle for their last minute instructions. Let's get some tips for today's game. First of all, we're going to start with Elise Collette, our match analyst for today. Who do you see winning today and by how much? I'm um, going to go three goal win to the Pies. You're going with a three goal victory to the Pies. James Strebinos, how do you see it playing today? I reckon we'll go Pies by seven goals. You're going Pies by seven. I'm going today Collingwood by ten points. I just have this niggling feeling this is going to be a lot closer than people anticipate. Is there a bit of Essendon bias creeping in? There is in? a lot of Essendon bias <laughs> in that creeping in. But At least you're being honest about it. it. Mind you, I thought they were a chance against Hawthorne a few weeks ago and uh, the Hawks uh, absolutely uh, cooked them on the barbies, to Didn't say the Essendon least. did kick the first few goals of that game? No, right? no, Hawthorne just blitzed it away. Um, but, uh, of course, we saw Essendon bounce back last week against Melbourne Uni. The question is, of course, how will they go today against the Magpies, who are... Are, though, coming off a buy, as we said, 80% of the times teams coming off a buy do lose. So let's see if that puts any pressure on the pies after having that week off or if the break has freshened them up at the right time of the season. We're just about ready to get underway here at Windy Hill in Essen as part of our double header. We've got later on the Doggies and the Tigers at 3.30pm. But to get us underway here for the first time this afternoon, here's James Strebinos. Yes, we've got Leighton and Nadler. They'll be doing the ruck duties for each team as the umpire just walks in, holds the ball aloft, and play will get underway. We're just waiting for the siren. Doesn't look like it's going to be Leighton in the ruck, actually. I think by the look of it, it might be Nicole Hales doing the ruck work. Yes, it is. And the loud siren at Windy Hill means play has started. King, rather, pardon me. It's King. As both rucks go up, Nadler got the better of that tap. As the balls are bouncing around. Big pack amongst it. And the umpire will call mine for the first stoppage of the day. Georgia Nance Cowan starting there in the rack, for, uh, pardon me, in the uh, midfield for Essendon. Nadler, Nadler wins the tap down. Now try to come through there and wrap them up immediately. Yugle, the umpire said no. Let play go on until it's rolled about a metre forward. Getting in there once again was Isabel Caranti, and the umpire says, I'll ask for the football back, and we'll throw it up. That's what he does. Away we go again. Now, let me stand on it. So did King. And Scowan gets the ball off the back of the pack. Gets on the right boot. Kicks around the corner towards the half-forward flank position. Curley creating pressure. Coming through was Malloy. Took out a body in the meantime. Curley follows up again, creating further pressure. Trying to jump in there, Elizabeth Hocking for the Bombers. Hocking goes again. Audley waiting for it. Went through her legs. Coming over the top of her, Jamie Lambert. The umpire blows the whistle and will call for a ball up. Curly got involved there. The Irish woman. As the rucks go out again. Natalie just jumping over her opponent every contest. Pack amongst it on the ground. Another ball up. Play kind of stagnant at the moment. Not moving anywhere. As Nadler again... With the tap for the Bombers, the ball hits the deck. High tackle will go Collingwood's way, and it will go the way of all. It will go the way of Lambert. She's been in good form this season. She kicks it down the wing. Mark is taken by number 24 for Alexander. Kicks it inboard. It wasn't a great kick. It's mopped up by Nan Scarwin, who couldn't quite get the hands away. Lambert kicks it inside 50, 30 metres out. Alexander gets the ball. Couldn't quite get a clean take. As uh, Ugal tries to mop it up, the ball's bouncing along the boundary, and it's, I think it's out of bounds. But the umpire's going to call a ball up. As the ball was just on the chalk of the boundary line. So the umpire says, actually, I'll call for a throw up by the look of it. So watch what's going on here. Throws it up instead, and away we go again. King. Lost it down. Trying to come through traffic there. Bunker couldn't get it out. Coming in a layer tackle was Eugle. Umpire circling. Blows the whistle. Will call for a ball up. So we're about 25 metres out from goal. Eyes attacking. Doing the ruck work here with Sophie Alexander. Got out towards the central corridor. Looking for an opportunity. Coming in to lay the tackle though was McFadden. Ball squeezed out close towards the boundary line. Audley comes in to create the pressure. Does well. Wrapping up her opponent. 
Mate occasion, Stacey Laurie, and the umpire comes in and calls for another ball up. Match analyst today is Elise Collette. A very tight, uh, congested game early. Not very many easy kicks. So it'll be interesting to see how long this intensity uh, continues. Umpire blows the whistle and the ball goes over the boundary line and out of play. So we'll call for a ball in. We're about 35 metres around from the Collingwood goal, attacking the eastern end of the ground or the primary school end. As we see the rucks on this occasion, are going to be Nadler up against Alexander. Thrown back into play. Nadler from behind. Lambert's lurking around if they can get it to her. Little triple kick on the ground through the legs there of Audley. Audley tries to go again. Then Scarwin goes... One more time, but King fed it out, going backwards. Whoop, through the hands there, Blacker couldn't hang on to it. Bombers will repel off their centre half back line. Now looking for now looking for McIntosh. Had it, lost it, got a nudge. Umpire said no, it wasn't in the back. Play on. Hand pass wildly up in the air, coming through there momentarily. I think it was actually Cooper had it. Tried to knock it forward. Trying to jump in there was Hosking. Can't quite get the football out. King wants to try and get involved. Head over the football. Quick hand pass out to Audley. Audley's kick gets smothered, though. Went forward about five metres. Forward of centre between centre and centre half. Forward here for the Bombers. They're going to lock it in there. Umpire circling, blows the whistle and says, I'll ask for the football back, please. And we'll call for a ball up. No score either side as we've played around about three or four minutes into this first term here on RSN Carnival 2. So it's King in the ruck, gets the tap, falls forward. As Nan Scowen tried to just jump on the ball. She drives right on it. Collingwood plays appeal for ball. They don't get it. As the ball is on the deck, there was uh, Carenti in there. Dished it out. And they're wrapped up in the tackle. And there'll be a ball up again. Just about 40 metres out from the Bombers' goal. On the grandstand side. As... Uh, Collingwood get the tap. Ball is loose on the ground, just outside 50 now as the Ruckman Nadler picks it up and just chucks it away. And Collingwood can stream away if they get free here. As the ball goes out, it is Belcher who couldn't quite get it. And now it's Livingston who just kicks it forward to Lambert, who know where she's dangerous around goal. She applies some pressure. That could be holding the ball. Umpire says no. As, the complete, uh, as they wheel around and go to the top of the 50, Picked up there was Warburton who gets tackled and it will be thrown in. That's Hull there that got dumped over the boundary line. Kendra Hull, the Canadian before uh, Belcher. Blecker, actually, how it's pronounced. Blecker. Jess Blecker from the Portland Sockeyes. Now playing, of course, uh, with Collingwood in the VFLW. As we wait for the ball to be thrown back into play. King versus Nadler on this occasion. That's Sarah King, I should say, as Nadler gets it. Nadler caught one high over the shoulder. She tried to get the kick away. Audley. Bumped on that occasion, trying to go with her at the same time was Michaelia Can Goes up the line, Ugles flying by and spoils the ball away from Morgan Doherty. The ball will go over the boundary line. We'll call for a throw in. Still no score either side. Six minutes gone first term. Match analyst today from Holmes Glen. Here is Elise Collette. I've got to ask, Pete, what on earth is a soccer? It's a fish. Okay. <laughs> there you are. That's a Fun question. Fun fact of the day for you. That is an answer. <laughs> As we wait for the ball to be thrown back in, all of a sudden the pack is going to quickly form just near the half-back flank here for the Bombers. Then Scout, of course, forming on the north list, now playing at Essendon, a former hockey roo. Nadler taps it forward. Player screaming for being held by Audley. The umpire said not buying into it. Trying to get on top of the football there. Isabel Carenti, little worm burner along the ground. Didn't go too far. King tried to get on hands and knees to pick it up. Couldn't do so. Picked up there by Nance Cohen, who got it to Heil. Heil went up the line. Okay, kick juggling around there. Sean Wilson. Wilson, formerly of Melbourne University, nearly caught one high on the way through here from Livingston. Umpire blows the whistle and says, I'll ask for the football back, please. And once again, we'll restart play. We're between centre wing and half forward flank here for the Pies on the city side of the ground. Nearly seven minutes gone into this first term. No score either side. RSN Carnival 2, WARFradio.com and the VFL app. As we look like we might have a blood rule happening here. Yeah, I think you're right. And by the look of it, I think it's Sophie Casey coming off. And Nicole Hales is coming back on. Here's James Trebinos. So I just saw Nan Scow and she was on the wing. She just ran all the way to the bench and they told her to go back. And she just sprinted all the way back into the centre. So she'd be pretty tired as the rucks go out. And there we speak of her, Nan Scow and just soccers it about 40 metres off the deck. 
right towards the boundary line as it trickles over and we'll have a boundary throw in. Uh, I, I doubt tired from that. Former Olympian, former uh, hockey roo, supremely fit athlete. Yeah, there she comes now. Now she's jogging off, coming to the bench. Fucking up the miles. So she's already got a lot of the ball. And now she's running a long way to the bench. The ball gets thrown in. King got the tap on that occasion as it goes to the ground. It's dished out and it's just tumbling around at the top of Essendon's forward 50. And umpire's call to throw. It will go Essendon's way and get kicked inside the forward 50. It's McIntosh. Couldn't get a hand on it as it's bombed away in the Nadler direction. It is now Livingston who picks it up and goes back with the hands. As they kick it down outer wing. Bouncing towards the centre. Nice soccer off to Malloy. But it said it was kicking in danger. And it will go Essendon's way as they just chip it around. She got pushed out of the marking contest and she'll get a free kick. Yeah. And that is uh, Wilson. Yep, Sean Wilson with a footy. Forward of centre wing, city side of the ground. Looking further ahead for some options. Let's see who presents to her. She decides to bomb it long instead towards the half forward line. Easy pickings there for the Collingwood defence. Michaela Cairns stopping back there to take the mark. She's now inside defensive 50. Was looking for the switch, decides to go up the line instead. Too much juice on the kick. Orly from behind creating the pressure on Schleiser on that occasion. Schleiser wanted to go in for a second crack at it. Kicking off the ground there on that occasion to move it forward was Fru. Fru did well, then went to ground, tried to punch it forward as she was going to ground. Didn't quite work out for her. Wanted to jump in there, Maliaris. Can't quite pull out the football. Stacks on the pill and we'll call for a bounce. Around uh, about 40 metres out from goal directly in front here at Windy Hill. You're listening to RSN Carnival 2, WARFradio.com and the VFL app. Ten minutes gone. Opening term, no score either side. Ball juggled around. Picked off here. Malia Astros trying to weave through traffic. Bombers with a chance at goal. How does it look? It's away. Did it squeeze in? It was close to the post. I think it got there. Yeah, it looks like it's in. It is. It's a goal to the Bombers. Mark that one down. I think that was Megan Fogus, the number 39. And the Bombers go to one straight six. Collingwood no score. Elise Collette. Yeah, that's one of the first opportunities that either side's really look like scoring. It's been quite tough, quite congested footy in the middle. But there have also been a number of times, particularly for Essendon, where they've just had a little bit too much juice on either the kick or the handball. So they've just got to take that second to make sure that you don't kick it over your teammate's head when it's not going to prove useful. And how good was that running through traffic, finding space and sneaking it through? Yeah, it was, and it was a good kick. So Essendon go up one goal. Collingwood yet to score as the Rucks go at it. On that time was King getting the tap down in the centre square. Hands on deck. Uh, getting the ball on that occasion is Steph Null, who gets the free kick. Pay on advantage. Kicks it long inside the forward. Couldn't mark as the ball is on the deck and it's wrapped up. An umpire should call a ball up. And he will 45 metres out from Essendon's goal. Can they sneak another one here? As the Rucks nominate. So it's Stazzy in the Rucks. She nominates. She got the tap forward. She did very well. She gets second efforts. As the ball's bouncing around. And it's holding the ball. Collingwood get the free kick at half back. And the free kick will go to Buchan. Bucken, actually. Bucken. That's interesting. How do you get the bucket on the bucket bus? <laughs> so she kicks it to the outer wing and she found Livingston, who's had a lot of it on the wing so far. Dishes out the hand pass, gets it back from her teammate. Hand pass wasn't good though, so she just had to hack it along the wing. Ball just rolling around on the carpet. There's a lot of stoppages so far. There's another ball up. Yeah, Hyle with the footy there being brought to ground, uh, immediately tackled. Just on uh, centre wing city side. So we'll call for a throw in. 12 minutes gone in this opening term. Bombers lead by a goal. Coming in over the top there. The late tackle was through. And we'll reset ourselves and go again. Crowd at the moment, I would estimate here at Windy Hill, approximately 150. Obviously being affected by the Dons playing today at the MCG. As going in there. 
laying the tackle for the Pies was Bucken, creating the pressure 45 metres out from goal. Livingston chasing after the football on her hammer as high, and the ball goes over the boundary line and out of bounds. Both formerly uh, of the Eastern Devils, and both formerly of uh, Collingwood. Hull, of course, never representing uh, the Collingwood team in an AFL match due to, of course, uh, doing, sadly, her second ACL uh, when she was recovering from an ACL back in December of 2016. Winning it there, King. Taken away, though, by Frew. Pumps it inside the centre square. Might rebound back again through Bucken. She was under pressure. Carenti tried to get the football out. Couldn't do so. And Scarman watches on, and the umpire answers the football back. And one of the dangerous players in the competition, Jamie Lambert, is lurking around the pack. Watch here. And Scarwin steals it. Gets the kick away, but she was being thrown to the ground while doing so. Curly kicked off the ground, but it went 15 metres in the wrong direction. Let's get it off the ground again. Collier came through on that occasion. Couldn't quite pick up the football. Now here come the Dons with a kick on the right boot. It's going to dribble inside 50. How will the football sound, uh, sit? Not kindly for them. Coming out to meet it was Caitlin Lee. Gets the hand pass over the top using Ruby Slicer on that occasion. Gives off the hand pass. Now on the left boot, they go up the line. One, two, bites the cherry. Sophie Alexander couldn't quite bring in the football. Trying to get the Don't Argue on the way through on that occasion. Nicole Hales turned over by the Bombers. They send it back towards their half forward flank with the early leap there. McFadden went over her hands. Pardon me, it wasn't. It was... Uh, uh, Stassi that went over her hands. Coming through the pies one more time. Curly tries to offer the assistance. Couldn't do so. Jumping in there. Stassi again. Can't get it out. Curly fighting for the football. They're hailing cabs. And the umpire says it's no good. We accept Uber only around here. And Essendon will force the stoppage. One goal lead to the Bombers. We've gone uh, 14 minutes into this opening term. Snadler gets the tap down. Essendon starting to attack. But she gets the player high. And Lambert in the wrong side of the ground for her. Gets a free kick. She'll assess her option. Just go short. She'll go short to Curly, the Irish woman. And there's that unique kicking style. She kicks it pretty straight, actually. She goes down this wing, and she finds there's no 53. Oh, no, that's a 60. There's Kaludi. She kicks it to Malloy. So Malloy taking time with the kick. Players get back, go short. They're playing this little short, ropey dope game style at the moment, Collingwood. She goes to Casey, who basically marked it just where Malloy was. She gets it down the wing. Great kick. She finds Lambert, who has just run from the back to the forward about 10 seconds. She kicks it long inside forward 50, about 40 metres out, over the player's head. Then Scarwin dished it out. There's a long kick out of the 50. Didn't quite reach out 50 and punched over the line for a boundary throwing. Match analyst Elise Collette. It was looking good what Collingwood were trying to do there. Just the, the short, simple kicks. In a quarter full of very very little easy possession, you've just got to you've got to try and make the most of every kick you can get. Ball is thrown back into play. Long and deep. Over the head of King. Taken straight out of the ruck by Nadler. Kicks it in towards the centre of the ground. Foot race on. Here comes Cecilia McIntosh versus Ashlyn Curley. The Gaelic footballer versus the veteran. And it's the Gaelic footballer that wins out. Curley sold the candy twice. Put it on the right boot. Went towards centre half forward. Got punched off hands. Livingston went after it. Then went to immediately tackle the player in Ugal. Ball got hand passed out. Essendon player immediately caught with it. Had to get rid of it while under pressure. Ball popped around for Shay Yordley to try and get onto it. Lost it once. Went back in for the second crack. Immediately wrapped up. And the umpire will call for a ball up between centre and centre half forward for the Pies. They're down by a goal, under four minutes remaining in the opening term. So it's now Casey who gets the ball, sells candy, and then goes real long inside the 50. Who can mark Lambert's at the back? She'll get the ball, she'll snap, she dribbles, and it's a goal! Lambert kicks the goal for Collingwood. Yeah, great kick there, Jamie Lambert. It's not easy kick it, trying to kick a goal from the pocket, but she made it look very easy. She's the form player of the comp, the leading goal kicker. It was an excellent dribble goal. You just knew when she was around she was going to pick it up and snap it through. It's exactly what she did. She is absolutely all class. The Eastern Devils still give it to me every time. When a few years ago I said, Jamie Lambert, oh, she's good, but she's not that good. No, no, I retract. I retract. <laughs> she is an absolute superstar and legend, Jamie Lambert, and again has been ripping up the VFLW competition. And depending on how many more games she plays for the season, when you count, when, when you count for load management, could be a red-hot favourite to take out the Lambert Pierce medal. Ooh, There's my early tip. There's my early tip. So the umpire throws the ball up in the middle of the ground and away we go again. 
I was going to say, the Pies trying to come away with it, but they were immediately caught on that occasion by Eleanor Cornish. Surely he's got the nickname Pasty. Coming out there is Curly. Tries to kick the football off the ground in front of herself. Curly goes again. Falls to the ground. Did she cop it in the back? Yes, according to the umpire. And the Irish woman will get up, feeling a little worse for wear for that. Uh, she's in a bit of pain there as she's... I think she's going to come off. Yeah. She's... May have just landed awkwardly as she copped that push. Just on her knees at the moment now, trying to... Feeling around like the rib area there. What might have happened is, without looking back at the vision, maybe the ball's hit the ground first. She's fallen on top yeah, of the ball. Yeah, she got crunched uh, by it, yep. That, that would hurt a hell of a lot. So, she's going to get up, try and suck in the breaths. And, I, uh, I think she's holding her shoulder. Cause she was Did leaning. Yeah, here she comes now, because, as you said, she was crouched over, kind of... In the rib area now her now she's holding the shoulder area so just might be a bit of a stiff just may have fell awkwardly with the football let's just hope it's nothing more serious than that because we said she's been in great form at the moment she's got some wheels and uh let's be honest if collingwood do not pick her up prior to the draft i'm not sure about how the signing rules work because of, of uh they've already used all their rookies if collingwood don't pick her up another club will swoop no question about that oh, no doubt You'd be an idiot to look past her in the draft. She has been having a terrific VFLW season and getting better and better. The umpire just waiting for her to leave the ground. As we speak, the clock is just being chewed away as we speak. 100 minutes to go. Of course, we play 20 minutes with no time on, bar a serious injury where the umpire can stop the clock, i.e. for a stretcher. Now goes short with the kick up the line, only to begin a set there by one of the shortest players on the ground, Shay Audley. Audley on the right boot. Works it out okay. Managing to spot up a target. It's back. Now has the football. Goes short with the pass. Don's working it up the line here from centre wing. Neva Stasi waiting out the back. Ball hit the ground. She wants to try and go in again. Can't quite get it out. Collier watches on. Stacks in the mill. And the umpire's going to ask for the footy back. On the bottom of that pack there. I think I see a 55 in Caitlin Bunker. So we'll reset play at the half forward flank. Counting down to quarter time here. Bombers lead by a goal. Maybe a chance of sneaking one more. Whoop, nearly one high on the way through. Umpire missed that. He says play on. Wardley feeds out the hand pass. Little stab kicked out of five through as the siren sounds. They were oh so close to taking a mark at 35 metres out. And the, believe it or not, the kick on goal after the siren, a cheeky kick that tripled through will not count. And uh, Essendon, one straight six. Collingwood, one straight six. At uh, quarter time, all tied up. Pardon the slip of the tongue there saying the Essen lead. It is all tied up at one straight six apiece. Let's get some thoughts on that first quarter from match analyst Elise Khaled. Yeah, very, very um, even quarter. You were saying pre-game, Pete, that it was going to be closer than um, people were thinking. That's certainly been the case. Very, uh, very congested. Um, particularly early in the quarter, there weren't very many easy possessions. But there were... Became more, so more free flowing as the uh, as the quarter finished. James Strebenos, your impressions on that first quarter? Yeah, it certainly opened up in that last five to ten minutes, and I liked how Collingwood got their possession game going, or they started to get going, and they end up getting a goal out of it. So if they can keep that going in the next quarter, then Essendon should watch out. We might take this opportunity to take a quick break here on RSN Carnival 2 via our Facebook stream and the VFL app and wharfradio.com. Scores are tied here. It's one straight six apiece on our match of the day. Premiership coach Paul Ruse talks teamwork, leadership and creating a winning culture. One of the smartest minds in football talks about his life and the lessons he's learned on the next RecLink Sporting Chance Night. If you're in sport or business, come and learn from one of the best. It's on Wednesday, August 14 at the Hoppers Club. Pelham Drive, Hoppers Crossing. Tickets just $25, but bookings are a must. Call 94196672 and join Paul Ruse. RecLink, including the unincluded. The end of financial year sales have begun at Brighton Mazda, and you don't want to miss it. Get incredible value across all new and demo Mazda, like huge discounts on run-out models, end of financial year bonuses, and drive-away deals across our range of SUVs, utes, sedans, and hatches. So don't miss a deal. Get in first and start your financial year with a brand new car from Brighton Mazda. SUV Central, where excellence costs no more. T's and C's apply. LMCT 10963. 
Ho, ho, ho! Go, you good thing! It's Christmas in July at the Meadows. Exhilarating greyhound racing, a delicious Christmas buffet, and jumping castles for kids every Saturday night in July. Book now at meadows.org.au. Need a new car battery? RACV comes to you seven days a week. Book your installation online in just minutes and they'll do the rest. To book, visit racv.com.au slash batteries. There's jumpers, hoodies and tees for you at leaguetees.com.au Leaguetees.com.au is your place for retro footy gear with designs created by local artists that you won't find anywhere else. Plus, their unique range of women's footy tees help raise funds for Indigenous literacy programs. Get online and start shopping today. Leaguetees.com.au Or SN Carnival 2. It's the VFL Women's Match of the Day. It is the VFL Women's Match of the Day on RSN Carnival 2. That's digital radio right throughout Melbourne. WARFradio.com via the VFL app. And today we are live streaming on Facebook.com forward slash WARF radio. You can stay on that Facebook page because coming up at 3.55 p.m. today, we'll have the Bulldogs and Richmond. A big game, Sabrina Frederick's first game in Tigers colours and the first game for Katie Brennan in Tigers colours against her old side, being the Western Bulldogs. 3.55 p.m. That's coming up on our Facebook stream and also on RSN Carnival 2. I'll be joined in that game by Neat Felton and by Lisa Kiwi Roper in commentary, so do join us then. James Stribanos and uh, Elise Collette joining us here in the uh, commentary position. And I guess it's fair to say when you were talking about saying how they finally got the possession game going for the Pies, we do have to remember they are coming off the bye, so it was their first bit of footy in two weeks. Yeah, it was a bit of scrap. I think they were just brushing off the cobwebs in that first five minutes. Uh, a, a big scrap. Uh, Essendon got their tackling game going as they normally do, and, uh, and then once Collingwood got some momentum, they found their own game. And Elise Collette, we just started to see Jamie Lambert come into the game in the last couple of minutes of that quarter. Yeah, she was very, very quiet early on. wasn't making much of a, um, much of an impact. But then, yeah, she um, got a few possessions, got the goal, and yeah, we'll be looking to continue that into. Um, into the second term and the rest of the afternoon. Plenty of the football as well for Shay Audley. It'll be interesting to see, of course, what happens with her in the AFLW draft. Yes, she's in her 30s, but my opinion still has plenty of good footy left in her. I was shocked that she was delisted by Carlton. Possibilities, maybe she either goes to uh, the St Kilda Saints. Peter Sill would know her from coaching at uh, Darabin up against uh, Diamond Creek many a times. Or perhaps taken by the Tigers. We know that Shay is actually a Tigers supporter. So um, it would make her day if uh, Richmond were to pick her up in the draft. Oh, time will tell, I suppose. Absolutely. We're just about ready to get underway here for the second quarter here on RSN Carnival 2, WARFradio.com, via the VFL app, via any sledging that might be happening at Bomber Blitz. Hello, everyone there, and DJR, who's posting away. Great to see you. And, of course, via Facebook.com forward slash WARFradio to get us underway for the second quarter. Here's James Strepanos. I haven't seen Shiny Layton in the ruck. It's King doing the ruck again as the umpire waits for the loud siren at Windy Hill. And the second quarter is now underway as King gets the tap. Just front and centre, she just tapped it straight down. Picking up there, doing pretty well, was through. He got wrapped up in the tackle straight away and it'll be a ball up. I was wondering actually if Leighton was going to be about because um, she'll be doing commentary for Sky Sports in the UK for the uh, Netball World Cup <laughs> was, coming up. I was just going to say, I don't think I've actually actually um, seen Shani on the ground at all. So, so she, she, she might, might have gone over already because that yeah, starts this week. Might have been a laid out as uh, here's the kick away by the Pies by Slicer. Long trying to find the hands there of Livingston who dropped it cold. And all of a sudden we're going to call for a ball up. Yeah, that would be right with Leighton now because I'm just thinking now King was originally listed as an emergency. So that would probably yeah. suggest that why Leighton isn't in. So we'll throw the football up in the air and away we go again. Livingston doing the ruck work on this occasion in the forward line. And Scar went from behind, wraps up her opponents. And the umpire blows the whistle and calls for a ball up. 18 degrees today, but Georgian and Scarwin, a clear violator of the Suns Out Guns Out policy. Going with the long sleeve today. Umpire throws the ball up in the air. Hits the deck. Fies with a quick hand pass courtesy. Malloy. To Malloy, who received it from Alexander. And Malloy, like a hot knife through butter, 
from 20 metres out said this was easy and just put it straight over the goal umpire's hat. That gives Collingwood a one-goal lead. They're two straight six. Essendon, uh, sorry, two straight 12, pardon me. Essendon are one straight six. Why I'm saying that is they're putting the wrong score on the scoreboard as we speak with the scoreboard attendant, James Trebinos. Oh, that was a bit too easy for uh, Malloy. She was never going to miss that. The handball for Alexander to her was perfect and especially the ruck work from King in that contest. So it was a great goal manufactured by Collingwood. And the scoreboard attendants working up to it now. Thanks, mate. Thanks for the wrong score. <laughs> well, Essendon now on 16, but he's taken the one away. So uh, there's a six. As long as they get it right eventually. So back in the centre as the ball gets thrown up, King gets a tap forward. Her ruck game's been strong so far this quarter and wrapped up was Malloy and there'll be a ball up in the centre. Or should I say wrapped up there was Kalaludi. As King gets the tap again, and Kalaludi wrapped up. And there's another ball up, just in the centre square, down Collingwood's attacking side. As King gets first use of the ball, Nance Gowans trying to scourge something in there. She has the ball, and it will be another ball up. So much like the first quarter, first couple of minutes pretty congested. As King again tries to get the tap, does. It's Malloy now, who couldn't quite get it out. It's on the ground again. She dragged it in. Umpire circling. But it's another ball up. So it's moved about a total of five metres in a minute. As Umpire throws it up, and Nadler just jumps over and gets a massive tap. It's wheeled away. Kicked forward for Collingwood. Long inside, just outside of the 50 will trickle out. Crowd, heard one guy yell deliberate, didn't get it. Uh, will this Actually, be no, he does last... because it's the last disposal. Yeah. I still don't quite get that rule. Like, at this level where there are boundary umpires aplenty, you don't need it. Like, I get it for local when boundary, uh, boundary um, umpires aren't <laughs> as easy to get, but... So Hosking goes inboard. It's like the uh, AFLW, or actually this league, I'll, spend, I'll mention it in a moment as the ball goes short, taking away now by Hales, who oh, what a kick. perfectly <laughs> to Livingston, right who takes mark. the mark on the lead, and should be king from about 45 metres out on a 45 degree angle. A bit like the AFL bringing in the 666 rule, the six representing the total numbers of zeros on an AFL executive pay packet. And it's the only reason why the rule exists to justify said pay packet. As coming in is Livingston. Slight breeze, shouldn't trouble her. Gets close to the player on the mark, stabs at it. Pack at the top of the square, sees it through for a minor score. Kirby Hicks back there for the Bombers. 2-1-13, the Pies. Essendon one straight six. We've gone five minutes into the second term here on RSN Carnival 2. So Hicks will be doing the kicking duties. She looks around. I think she's going to go straight down the middle. No, she goes down to, to the McIntosh direction. It's off hands, and Collingwood will try and get it back inside the 50. But great tackle. Won't see that happen as it's wrapped up in the centre, and it will be a ball up. So we've had a few of them this quarter so far, just much like the first. Unlike the first, though, um, a team has actually looked like scoring. Yes, that's right, and Nadler got the tap on that occasion as uh, Audley couldn't quite get the hand pass away to her teammate. It's wrapped up for another ball up. So we'll reset play here between centre and centre half forward for the Pies. They've come out firing shots early in this second term. One out again by King. Ball hit the ground, random boot in there, popped out the Collier who got immediately caught by Slicer. Trying to fight in for it there. It was through. And the umpire blows the whistle and says, uh, let's take the footy back, please, and let's call for a ball up. The umpire's had more of the ball than the players. Umpire's blown. Looks like it must be a blood rule here. He looked straight away and put the footy down. And it will be the player coming off the ground. Looks like a 25 there in Kayla Can. She'll be replaced immediately. Coming on for her 48 in Ali Build. 
Essen to make a couple of changes. Coming on the ground, Isabel Caranti and the player in Georgia, Nan Scarwin. Make sure everyone's in position, and then he'll restart play. Ball is thrown in the air. Adler does the ruck work, taps it down again with no great purpose. Audley, straight through the middle, put it on the right boot, decides to swing it out towards the city side wing. What race is going to be on here? Trying to get front position on that occasion. Hosking under all kinds of trouble. Oh, here comes a dynamo from out of nowhere. Just kicking the ball along the ground. But uh, taking away this bunker, whose kick is well wide. Out of bounds of the full. Ended up in the bowls club almost. Or in the bunker. Yeah, well, yes. <laughs> and Nanskowen's going to take the resulting free kick. Hang on, that requires a... Thank you. As Nanskowen on the right boot goes up the line. Got out the back door. I'll clean up here. The pies. Looking for Malloy. Oh, she just floated through the air. Took it on the right boot. Swings it in board. Taking it as Paige Nash. Nash goes for a run. Puts it on the right boot towards the half forward flank. Lambert. Grandstand side of the ground of Jamie Lambert. Chops on the right. Goes short. Looking for King Spalled from behind. That way by the Bombers, courtesy of Warburton. Yeah. Wonder if she's from the Arrow Rangers, because that would be ironic. And then Schleicher <laughs> goes short. <laughs> Cut off then by Shay Audley. Audley on the right boots. Oh, picked off by Chloe Malloy. They were former Diamond Creek teammates in 2017. Malloy then was the rookie. Shay Audley then was known as the serial pest. In lovingly terms, of course. Oh, what a oh, kick. Oh, brilliant kick by Malloy. And Lambert. Spotting Jamie Lambert from the goal square. And where she's taken the mark should be on, yes, a 45-degree angle, but from about 12 metres out. Match analyst, Elise Collette. Yeah, it was a great intercept from Chloe and um, and great work to find um, the informed player in Lambert, who's just try who's just coming into the game a bit here after, as we were alluding to earlier, having a bit of a quiet first term. So let's see if she can um, kick truly and get the goal. Lambert comes in, never in doubt. 3-1-19, Collingwood, Essendon, one straight six. We've gone almost halfway through this second term. You're on RSC and Carnival 2 Digital Radio, WARFradio.com, the VFL app. Here is our match analyst again in Elise Collette. I don't think that even deviated a degree. That was a great kick from Jamie Lambert. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe um, Essendon have actually had an inside 50 this quarter. So I think you might be right. Collingwood have really put on the, um, the afterburners here and... Um, the scoreboard is um, is finally showing it. Zumpire back into the centre. As Collingwood lead this game by 13 points. Nance Gowan, she's been in everything, but she got it stripped off her. And it might be holding the ball. Umpire circling and calls a ball up. Would have been pretty stiffed. So, we'll reset play. We'll go again. One out on that occasion by Sean Wilson. Oh, dumped into the ground then with aggression. And the umpire says, that's holding the football. If you can pick yourself up, Megan Doherty. Absolutely gone. Laying the tackle then. It looks like it was Stepnell. Laurie Stepnell laying down the law. Puts it on the right boot. Goes towards the centre half forward position. Spoil from behind. A couple of Essendon players try to attack it. Stasi was working the way through there. Couldn't quite hang on to the football. Popped out Nance Scarwin. Tries to tap it along the ground. Player dispossessed. Going in there. I think maybe in the player inhales. The umpire blows the whistle and calls for a ball up. And we'll go again. Trying to burrow the way in there for Essendon. It was Fergus. We'll go one more time. Fru's lurking around the side of the pack. They'll try and go in her direction. Picking it up and getting caught, Laurie Stepnall. The umpire is circling. He was considering paying a holding and then thought better of it. And says, let's call for another ball up. The umpire is teasing the play a bit. Every time he's about to blow the whistle, it looks like he's going to hold. He's going to pay holding the ball, but doesn't. So there's Alexander. Tried to oh. get the ball. That was interesting. As the ball gets kinked inside forward 50 for the Pies. And what rebound that was. But she handballed it to no one outside of 50. Who might be contact below the knees. Umpire did not call it. Quick kick in there was uh, Kaludi. And it's going to be a minor score for Collingwood. So they move to three goals, 220. Tessens, one goal, six. They lead by 12 points. 
as Courtney Eugle takes it in the back pocket. Yeah, not a great one there by Kirby Hicks. The funny thing is, maybe there was a little talk there. She had space in front of her. She just put on a quick step. She could have got away from that situation instead of the hand pass as Hicks now goes back to Eugle. Eugle with the football. Deep in defence, she says, go long, wagons ho. And then puts it on the right boot. Nancy Carwin trying to push back. She got shoved off the football earlier. Does a little bit of shepherding work then to allow us to kick it into space. Foot race is on right in front of our broadcast position on the wing. Getting bowled over as Laurie in the process trying to jump in there. Was Puran Tatameri. She can't get the football out. The umpire says, I'll ask for it back, please, and we'll call for a ball up. Laurie, of course, is the 23rd player today for the Magpies. Ball is thrown up in the air. One out by Nadler, who's late to the contest. Trying to come through there was Focus. Immediately caught by Schleicher. Focus goes again, gets the hand pass out. And Scarwin lurking around at the back. And Scarwin's got it, missed the hand pass. Miss skewed now back to Kendra Heil. Got shoved over. In the words of South Park, Oh my God, thank you, Kitty! <laughs> now trying to go in there is Heil again. Couldn't quite get it. Hiles goes back, looking for Schleicher. Now on the right boot. Schleicher goes long towards the half-forward flank position. And taking a mark then. The umpire says pay on, not paid. It came off hands. Bucking had to get going quickly. A kick though. Oh, Hicks dribbled it and dropped it. Eugle goes in there. She gets caught by Blecker. And the umpire says throwing the football. And from the Portland Sockeyes, Jess Blecker has a shot at goal opportunity from about 40 metres out in a 45 degree angle. Match analyst Elise Collette. Is she in her range here? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the, uh, I haven't seen her play. Jess Blecker stabs at it, oh. and it is wide. She thought she had the range. I was going to say, it turns out and it was in her range. It was just her accuracy. And it's interesting. You actually had Chloe Malloy immediately afterwards run up to her and say, this is what you should have done in this situation. A bit of on-field coaching. Yeah. A bit of leadership. Uh, it's what you want. As we wait for the oh. kick to come back into play. Oh, it's dangerous. Malloy, Eugle there as well, fighting for it. Warburton, Malloy still going. Malloy, little chip on the right. Kick. That's no 10. Play on. Lambert had to get rid of the football straight away. Immediately caught by Carenti. And the umpire circling will now blow the whistle and call for a ball up. Malloy was smart. The only problem is it wasn't more than 10 metres. <laughs> yeah. Malloy has been smart all game. You don't want her on her back. As Nadler wins the tap and trying to get through, but getting tackled. And it's holding the ball. Essen will get a free kick. Took on a couple too many players there and that was got the free. So now it, uh, it was Hile that had the ball. And she just kicked it real long into the centre. Zillian McIntosh there. There's Pack on the ground. Umpire circling and we'll, oh, he called it, but the ball actually got out. So there'll be another ball up in the centre. Collingwood lead by 12. It's King with the tap. Ball hits the deck. Good tackle on was Carenti. And the umpire will ball it up again. So we'll reset play one more time. Carenti gets up, adjusts the hair, says I'm all good. And guess who was on the bottom of the back? Jamie Lambert. In goes Nadler again. Gets the punch going forward. Intercepted. And whoop. Audley spun around the footballer and Newton. And it worked out the Bombers' way. A hurry kick towards the forward line. Stasi chasing after the football. Running with her was Bunker. And the ball went over the boundary line and out of bounds. So we'll call for a throw in. 35 metres out from the Essendon goal. Here's match analyst Elise Collette. Yeah, it was a good tackle there. And then... Unfortunately for Colling or the, uh, the player there handballed it the wrong way and Essendon have finally gotten inside 50. 15 minutes gone here in this second term. Ball on the ground. Picked up and trying to kick around the corner. There is Stepnall trying to find Stasi to try and get onto it. Got bumped off of it. Stacks on the pill. In goes Fowler. Umpire. There's the whistle now and we'll call for the ball up. Picking herself up the bottom of the deck. Galuti, Danielle Galuti for the Pies. Umpire throws the football up in the air. Tapped forward by the Pies. Lambert maybe held without it when it got knocked away from her. And again, another ball up. Cecilia McIntosh pops her head up the back <laughs> going, what's going on? Where's the footy? Oh, I don't have it. <laughs> it was the funniest little thing then from McIntosh. That was great vision. As we wait for the ball to be thrown up. McIntosh tries to work her way through the pack. The ball won't get to her, though. It's taken away by Newton instead for the pies. Goes towards the halfback flank. 
now Livingston came out to meet it. Malloy sliding on her oh. knees. Still had time to get it up. Put the football between her legs and then uh, kicked around the corner into open space and center wing to hope for someone to run onto it. And that was Newton who's got a little bit of space. Now picks up the football. Newton almost got run down by Carenci. Got her kick away. Got up the line. Worked out fine. Fine Michaelia can. Can with the footy. She's 60 metres out from home. Gets on the right boot. Puts it to 45 metres out directly in front. Coming through the pack. Alexander marked by a teammate there. I think it might have been Bucken who's got it. And the Pies with an opportunity on the paint, 50 metres out, going in the blacker direction, just over her head. A little too much juice on the kick. And Eloise Ashley Cooper is going to clean it up. So the handball's away. Essendon can run now. She'll take a bounce. And there's Eddie's uh, Spark, who got the kick away, but only as far as King. It's top of 50. Malloy from 49 metres out, kicks to the top of the goal square. Lambert's lurking. She might get it around the corner. Great kick in board, and she finds Pan, who will kick from about 35 metres out. Yeah, great kick there from um, Jamie Lambert. She was able to analyse the situation, realised that it wasn't the best option to go for goal herself, and um, she was able to find her teammate, and let's see if, she, um, if they're able to kick the goal here. So she should have the distance in her. She'll kick from 35 metres out. She strolls in, King offering a lead, she comes in to pretty close to me on the mark, but I think she's got it, she has, straight through the middle, Collingwood get another, they go to 4-2-26, tested in one goal straight six, and they lead by 20 points. Streaming away a bit here Collingwood, um, Essendon just need to, need to up the ante defensively just a little bit. Um, it all started with that, that bad kick inwards, um, just um, attacking side of their defensive 50. So, um, yeah, just got to watch the kicks and you know, keep up the um, defensive pressure. Yeah, Spark was running down the wing, took that one bounce, but kicked in, in board. She took the risk, didn't pay off. Yeah, she was looking really good, but it, the kick just wasn't strong enough going inwards. may have been even better to just kick to space straight down the line. Ball is thrown up in the air. King tries to go for it with Nadler as well. Went back in to lay the tackle, but the umpire said it was way too high. And the free kick going to Maliaris. Maliaris with a footy on the right boot. Bombers need something before half time. Fly from the behind. But Otara Mary couldn't quite hang on to it. Going in to lay the tackle. And Scarwin did well. Wrapped up her opponent in Kalaluti. And the umpire will ask for the football back. 48 metres out from the Bombers goal. They've got a minute to half time. They're currently down by 20 points. One out there by Nadler, trying to lay the tackle there, Maliaris. Coming in there, Eugle. Eugle did well, squeezed the football out. Pies, though, surrounding it. Panatara Mary had it momentarily, got taken away from her. And Scarwin trying to go basketball style, then <laughs> kicked it off the ground. That was ambitious. Went towards the pocket. Stars was lurking around, couldn't pick it up. Audley harassing an opponent. But the Pies are going to come out of this sticky situation through Kalaluti. Unless trying to get in there is Kirby Hicks, who went rejected. Put her hand in there. Coming across, Sean Wilson. Pies now kick it around the corner towards center wing, broadcast side. Here comes Jess Blecker, immediately caught by Kendra Hale. A Canadian on an American right there, folks. And the umpire calls for the football back. Yeah, great tackle there from um, Kendra. I'm sure there's a, a 4th of July joke there could have been made, but can't think of one off the top of my head. So King gets the tap down. Beautiful tap down in Kaludi. A long kick forward, and that is half time. Collingwood, 4 2 26. Essendon, 1 goal 6. Collingwood lead by 20 points. And they really got going that quarter, didn't they? Yeah, and they were, they were just able to create the space and then find the right options inside forward 50 and the um, and Essendon just weren't able to get it forward they got inside 50 maybe once maybe twice at most and yeah great quarter from Collingwood and um, Essendon will be looking to, for the second half to try and do what they were able to do early in the first quarter and just um, close the gap a bit. Absolutely. Um, and the, the annoying thing was, if, if they could have got one there, they would have been, what, perhaps 14 points down and felt they had some momentum. They just didn't get reward for effort. But to be fair, again, on the Collingwood side, they dominated three quarters of that second term. Yeah, they certainly did. They got majority of the ball. They kept possession and they just chopped off 
anything Essendon tried to get going. So and they must be concerned just quickly about uh, Ashlyn Curling's yeah, shoulder she's, because she's I'm got just, the jacket on. She's got the jacket she's on. She's iced. Iced and uh, yeah, that means she is yeah iced on the left shoulder. That means she is done for the day. Yeah, once, once you're iced, you are done for the day. So it's disappointing because she was playing pretty well in that early part there. Yeah, and we we're really big wraps for her as well. So let's just hope it's a, a minor injury niggle. It's a bump. It's a they look at it in the scans and they go, no, nah, you'll be fine. Even if it means a week or two off the sideline, let's hope it's not anything too serious. Uh, and if um, if she is pushing for AFLW, may as well rest it now and then come back, have a great end of the season and then push forward into next year. Absolutely. Let's just take a quick look at some of the better players that we think are doing okay outside the AFLW players because we know Malloy and Lambert, etc. are starring and they do what they do. Let's have a look as we go through the Collingwood list. Uh, uh, Hales has been a little bit of the football. Stacey Laurie saw a little bit of it there of that uh, second term for the uh, Pies. Um, uh, Caitlin Lee popped up for a moment. King's been doing good in the rack. Again, the late inclusion for them. Yeah, she's been very good. I thought Nadler had the better of her early, and then that quarter, King was just jumping all over her. If we look at the SN list and players that are trying to be picked up, including ex AFLW talent, Georgia Nanskarwin at the she's back of the pack, good. everything. She's an outside midfielder. She's more than an inside, but uh, she's been good with a footy. And you can just go, I can understand why North dropped it. It's, it's very unlucky. North just happens to have an elite midfield at the moment when you've got the Emma Carneys and Jenna Brutons and the likes yeah. all surrounding her. It's very hard to get into a side that <laughs> yeah, good. For sure, but, yeah. But how well she's playing at the moment, you go, she would compliment Richmond and the Southern, well, St Kilda Saints, should I say, very nicely if she was to commit to playing to either of them uh, in the AFLW. Yeah, she's definitely been the standout for Essendon today. She's been a, a cut above the rest, so... Uh, if she can keep her game going and keep that form going to the end of the season, then she'll certainly be looked at. And the same thing as well with Shay Audley, tackling pressure from her and, again, acting more as an outside rather than an inside. It's it, it, funny in a way, Audley and Nance Cohen almost seem... They're, they're different, but they almost seem similar roles, just executed slightly differently. Hmm. And, you, and of course, you never see both of them almost at the same time. They're, they're rotating yeah. them around a bit, so... So they're, they're players that are almost fighting for a same spot. Kentra Hile, of course, with a new lease of life coming off the back line, has been doing uh, well for the Bombers in that one. Uh, Kirky, uh, Courtney Eugle is interested to see her play deep in defence uh, for the Dons yeah, as well. Yeah, she's had the kick-in responsibilities for most of the day as well. And, and Nadler, as we said, doing okay for what I call an undersized ruck. She, she seems to be doing fine. So from an AFLW draft perspective, if we were looking at today's game, you would go, okay, there's about half a dozen players you'd be seriously yep. looking at. Yeah, absolutely. We'll take this opportunity to take a break here at halftime. We'll be back in about eight minutes or so, and then we'll return with the second half between Collingwood and Essendon. At the moment, it is Essendon, one straight six, trailing Collingwood, 4 2, 26. We'll be back after this. This is what you might have missed on RSN 927's Racing Pulse. Elite Drake, well supported, and the punters get the money in the last. Elite Drake, a half special <laughs> diva, Miss Bandito. Oh, there were a lot of punters who needed Elite Drake to get home. It was backed off the map, and Tio Nugent, a young gun jockey who is certainly going places extremely fast, did everything right, and he joins me this morning on Racing Pulse. How are you, Tio? Hi, Mel. How are you going? Very well, mate. Congratulations with the win in the last race. Tell me, what was it like to ride in that race? Probably the best way to describe it was maybe day three of the carnival at May and probably six o'clock at night. Not much vision at all and I wouldn't have liked to be behind three back on the fence. A legend of Australian broadcasting, the voice of Queensland racing for so many years and one of racing's really good guys. Alan Thomas, how are you, AT? Hello, Michael. I'm good. I'm good. How did you hone your craft? My father actually had a racing game. You picture a board, a seven foot long. He had all these lead horses, which had a fishing line on them. They all went into a box which you'd wind up. And when you wind up the box, the horses then obviously went down the board. If the, if the horses wound up on the same radius all the time, they went quicker. If they slipped off, the radius of sport, they'd stop. I used to call the, the races off the board with the lead horses. Chris Caserta into the Inner Sanctum this morning. How are you, Chris? Yeah, good, mate. Thanks for having me. What's the comeback been like? What's it like to get back in the saddle? Actually, really good. Uh, my body's held up better than I thought. Had five rides at Banza, which was my first day back on Sunday, and I thought I would have pulled up really, really sore the Monday morning, but no, my body's held up beautifully. I think just doing all the track work that I've had prior to um, coming back, it's, it's definitely helped me, and I've, I've done a little bit of gym work, not a lot. It's just good to be back, to be honest with you. Everyone, I'm a horse trainer. I've been doing a long time. I love animals. I will not send that horse to a racetrack if he's not going to be competitive and a chance to win. So, everyone just relax. 
trust me, we'll will or we'll ride him in the trial. If he ticks him, we go to the next step. We knew of doing what we're doing, and that is that the, the dollars shared amongst the government and, and racing. It's got to be a partnership. And, and to me, governments at times treat it as a sport when they don't want to put money into it and treat it as a business when they want to take tax out of it. So there's got to be a happy median, and certainly it hasn't been on that late. Racing Pulse, the heartbeat of Victorian racing. Weekdays from 8.30am on RSN 927. The Breakfast Club. Taylor Jure joins us from the Dogs. You play with some very, very good players at Hawthorne. Where does Marcus Bondapelli now sit? Sam Mitchell is probably one of the best I've played with, and I still think that. But I think Bond's just got this snack just to do what no one else can do. Not often do you think in game how good someone's going, and I was definitely sitting back in the back. Oh, gee, I'm glad he's on our team. Rodney Ed, the goey to me doesn't do enough. I know what he does is miraculous at times, but he's got to be doing more. He is a disappointment in many ways. Alex Carey. To play another good game against New Zealand, obviously winning helps, and that's the best place I've ever played, and it's really special. So, look up, I knew where the family was sitting, so that was pretty special, but again, hopefully we're back there in a couple of weeks' time. Max gone. Well, we'll get straight to it. How's the Ankle. Obviously, for it to be that big, it has to be something, and I've watched the video of it as well, and it did look pretty grim. Mm. But I think everyone around the club saying that it should be something that I can, if I get the swelling down, back in the week of training and hopefully play Sunday. Taylor Adams is in the studio with us. It takes convincing to get me over the line next week. Obviously, the travel to Perth doesn't help, but that's sort of my ultimate goal. And then if not, I'll definitely play against the Giants. Time to talk some Melbourne Storm now. Shandor Earl. There was that ban for a period of time through Asada. We can't turn back the clock, of course, but what advice would you kind of give yourself through that time? I look back at a 22-year-old version of myself. Look, I'd like to not put myself in that position, although I... I'm able to say you know, everything that happened to me shaped me as the person I am today. Still five years out of your career is something I would like to have back. But hindsight's a very wonderful thing. The sanctum this morning is Navy Blue. Sam Doherty. Have you spoken with Brendan Bolton over the last couple of weeks? He wished me all the best again on the phone. I'd be naive to think that he's just gun rosy and he's left footy and he's going unbelievably well. And I basically called him just to say thank you for everything that he's done for the footy club. I know that this isn't the best part of your life and the best event that you've had to go through. But from the bottom of my heart, I just want to say thank Thank you for all you've done for us to set us on the path that we're on. The Breakfast Club, 6 till 8.30 weekdays on RSN 927. The Country Footy Show with Paul Daffy. And I by 95 points and they should have won by about 135. After each round, all the good stuff about the game around Victoria. A bit of a dogged win in the end because we're a pretty young group and everyone probably would have expected the Premiers to run over the top of us, but that one's the case. RSN 927's Country Footy Show with Paul Daffy and Andrew Hughes. There's a fresh podcast up every Monday at rsn.net.au That's why football is. Or catch the first release early Monday mornings on RSN 927. Analog, digital and streaming. You can talk with Father Gerard Dowling. Welcome to the Family Council Program. It's great to be with you wherever you are. We all need a helping hand. It's always great to come in here, spend these two hours with you as you listen. And a friendly voice is just a phone call away. It ends on the line. Hi, Gerard. The Family Councillor Program. We all need someone to talk to. Sunday nights from 10. Ooh, heaven is a place on earth. On RSN 927. Presented by Tobin Brothers Funerals, celebrating lives. 48 matches, 10 teams. It's the fight for cricket's holy grail. When it's the World Cup, when it's a big event, they turn up. When it's as big as the World Cup, RSN 927 ramps up the team. And they put in a performance, and boy, have they done that today. Whitey. Our commitment to the World Cup is world class. On The Breakfast Club, on The Late Show, and on Sports Overnight. Former Australian players John Hastings and Cat White will be with us throughout the Cup. Pakistan side with their Champions Trophy result in 2017 yeah. are a dangerous team. Embedded with the Aussie team, Vice Captain Alex Carey, a regular guest. G'day, Alex. Hello, guys. How are you going? Following every Cup match, cricket writer Adam Collins. The atmosphere was astonishing. They were sitting with the fans down there. And we're proud to roll out the Final Word podcast, direct from England, just after 5.30 every morning inside the breakfast bar. Adam Collins and Jeff Lemon wrapping up all the overnight play. Shakib got the man of the match for his bowling. Was the key just to really squeeze South Africa and derail them through the middle. All the 
way to the World Cup final. We're about the game because we love our cricket. Oh, Correct way is Sunday's racing review. A late break, well supported, and the punters get the money in the last. Great day as uh, Elisa Hinch settling up a, a late break. Look, it was unbelievably dark, but I know this horse inside and out, and the worse the conditions get, the better he goes, and he loves the rain, so it's got worse and worse. Our smiles just got bigger and bigger. This Sunday, Brendan Delaney and David Gately will join me for the full wrap the final day at Flemington. RSN 927's Correct Weight, Sunday morning from 8. Thanks to the tab. Who are you backing? We go round Victoria for RSN 927's Country Notice Board. It's your statewide heads up on the best racing experiences in all three codes. Andrew Q's whips around Victoria for Country Notice Board. Tuesday mornings at 10 and later on podcast. RSN Carnival 2. It's women's Aussie rules are doing what they love. The fast, the tough, don't mess with them because they can get rough. Are you ready for the challenge? Are you ready for the match? It's the call of the game. It's the VFL Women's Match of the Day. On RSN Carnival. It's the Indeed, it is the VFL Women's Match of the Day on WARFradio.com, RSN Carnival 2 Digital Radio via the VFL app and on Facebook.com forward slash WARF Radio. Hello to those listening in the Bomber Blitz Forum on Bigfooty.com. Thank you very much to Law who posted the link to the video in there. We'll go around the grounds in just a moment's time as well. And uh, we'll also uh, uh, thank those that are listening online. They've tagged in on our Facebook page, listening in from Spain. Espanol are listening in at the moment. We've also got listeners in from Colorado, which I'm hoping to visit Colorado, Denver. Please say yes, Bank, <laughs> to me in uh, October. Also, as well, to those listening in in Oregon at the moment, of course, uh, teammates of uh, Jess Blecker from the Portland Sockeyes. Hello to Lawrence Skusinechny. I hope I got that correct. And, of course, Melissa Armstrong Wilhelm, who, of course, is from the Arizona Hawks. She is listening in Arizona as we speak. Got to love any team that's called the Hawks. Oh, here we go. Here's the bias. <laughs> then you should meet Brian. You should meet Brian Barish from the Philadelphia Hawks. Then oh, they're the Division one? Three national champions, by the way, in the men's. Oh, I might get on board then. Well, hey, once you said that, he's going to find you on Facebook. He's going to not only friend you but send you a membership and say, "Here, here, here money, please." Uh, so, so you, you've just been jobbed in. Uh, Collingwood are on the ground doing their warm-ups. Essendon coming back out onto the ground as we speak. For those that have just joined us, uh, one injury to report so far, and that is Ashley Curling, the Irish woman for the Magpies. We feel like she may have just fallen on her shoulder as she hit the ground when she was pushing the back from a tackle on the centre wing during the second quarter. When we did see her last, it was ice on the shoulder, jacket over. She was done for the day, but as we said, we hope it's more precautionary than anything because we are hopeful of her being picked up in the draft. Another cross-coder being signed. Um, so, as we look at it, it's 20 points the difference. Collingwood dominated that second quarter. I throw it over to you, to Elise and James. What can Essendon do to turn it around? I get... My only th theory is just to increase that um, defensive pressure and just make sure that Collingwood don't get any easy kicks because a lot of their goals were set up just by creating space and then getting a simple kick out. Yeah, you need to stop Collingwood's kicking game. That's number one. If Essendon can man up and just stop the short options, then, uh, yes, maybe Essendon can get something out of it. Let's just quickly go around the ground. So, Alicia, you were looking at Hawthorne and Geelong. That game, I think, is just about ready to enter the final quarter. Yep, just started the fourth quarter. Dead even, 23 apiece. Wowee, the grand final rematch all locked up at 23 apiece. Earlier today, 59-7, to 7, the Saints whacking Weemstown. Oh, that ouch. was uh, a glee. Reality check. And yeah, how, about you, how, about, how about your Casey Demons? They're up against Melbourne Uni today. I can't get the app working. So got, have you got I've the got score in front of me? Melbourne Uni, 5-7-37. Lee Casey, 2 7 19. Ooh, interesting. Well, it's Melbourne Uni. So. And that, again, that game is entering the final quarter as well. So Melbourne Uni seem favourites to run out and win that one. <laughs> to get us underway for the third term here on RSN Carnival 2 Digital Radio, here's James Strebinos. So underway in the third quarter as King gets the tap out. And he went to Casey... 
who's trying to manufacture something. And off the ground there was Nan Scarwin, who's played a pretty good game so far. Because the ball's just trickling down the wing. Picked up there was Wardley. Who couldn't get anything going. But now running on the wing. And now run down in the tackle. But it, it is pushed in the back. And that is Hosking. So she'll have it on outer wing. If you look at her options, nothing too much on. So she'll decide to just go in board. But she gets smothered. She gets her own ball back. That worked. She gets stripped of it. Umpire says no, not holding the ball, but instead he'll come in and he will throw it up. As the umpire gets the footy back from Georgia Nan Scarwin. And we'll re-go again. Minute gone in the term. 20-point lead to the Pies. Throws the ball high in the air. One out by King on that occasion. He goes Shay Audley to immediately wrap up Sophie Casey. And the umpire says no prior opportunity, so we'll ball it up one more time. Don't forget, Essendon fans will be back again at Windy Hill next Saturday to bring you the game of Essendon versus GWS Giants, the VWFL Invitational match. Going through to get a hand pass out there is Doherty. Pies now with an opportunity. Hales runs through, kicks it inside 50. Ball bounced away from Livingston and Cornish. And the ball will go over the boundary line and out of bounds. Yes, we'll be doing Essendon and GWS. And then on the Sunday, it's Darabin and the NT Thunder from Preston City Oval. No Sunday game this week because there simply is none scheduled in the VFLW competition this Sunday. wonder why that is. Seems a little bit odd. Your guess is as good as mine. So the ball gets bounced around and the handball out. It's uh, kicked away from Hicks outside of 50. And they're just darting around and giving the handball that was uh, Proy as Hicks just gets it again hacks it out high ball courageous but couldn't take the mark and it's out of play as Nash couldn't get the ball back in so we'll have a boundary throw in in the first minute and a half of the quarter so we're King and Nadler it's been a pretty good ruck battle, actually. It's been pretty even. As King got the tap on that occasion, but it was straight down. Nadler got the ball out, and now it's passed out to uh, Newton, who kicked it away. Now Scarwin with the fist, who fists it on the ground, then tackles her opponent. It'll be another ball up. So a reset play here. Collingwood 4 2 26. Essendon 1 straight 6. Here in our VFLW match of the day, part of a double header today. Coming up, the Bulldogs and Tigers, 3.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. All on the deck. Trying to work it close towards the boundary line. Hales goes to ground, almost stripped of her own teammate. And Doherty, who also fell over. She's wrapped up on this occasion by Eloise Ashley Cooper for the Bombers. And we'll reset ourselves again. Uh, Collingwood's uh, half-forward line, city side of the ground. But from our commentary position. And Scarman close towards the boundary line. Juggling, juggling, juggling. But the umpire said it was already over the boundary line. Here's our match analyst, Elise Collette. Uh, once again, it's a very, very even um, even quarter so far. Very congested, very, very tight. Um, Collingwood have, have got a few good kicks towards their goal, but they haven't haven't really like looked like scoring yet, um, which is probably a, quite a credit to Essendon. Chasing the ball over the boundary line then was Sophie Casey. Got a little nudge on the way from Shay Audley on the way through. And uh, the umpire will go to throw the football back into play. 55 metres out from the Collingwood goal. They're attacking the primary school end of the ground. Left of your radio dial as the ball is thrown back in. Nadler did the rucking on that occasion. Carenti was running nearby. Slicer couldn't quite hold onto the pill. And Scarwin now picks it up. Had to get through heavy traffic. Hand pass back in board. It was a dribbler. Finally picked up by Shea Audley. Audley comes in board. Newton had it momentarily. Got knocked out of her hands there by Spark. Spark couldn't quite pick it up. Ball still on a scrap on the ground. Collier goes through heavy traffic. Her kick is smothered there, courtesy of King. Newton goes to ground. In goes King. Well, that is uh, an interesting tussle. One of the tallest players on the ground versus one of the shortest players on the ground. And then in that case, it was Shea Audley winning out, throwing King into the ground. And the umpire says, I'll ask for the football back, please. Proves that height is just a number. So Nadler gets the tap forward, but only as far as Newton. He tried to manufacture something. There's a tackle, strong tackle by Carenti. Uh, wrapped it all up. And she, then she got a soccer out. 
And then down Scarwin with the spin and then the handball out. How good was that? Through traffic now, Audley goes to the top of the 50, but only as far as Bunker. So Bunker just goes for the switch. The kick wasn't great as she found Fowler, who went back to her. And outside of the 50 now, they will come back straight in. She didn't have the ball, so will be holding the man. It'll be advantage paid, will it? Oh, it he appeared to pay advantage and, and then, then take retracted it. Right back. it. That was Lucky it wasn't because it was a point. So is it now a free kick to Audley? Yes, it'll be taken back. So she'll have it about 60 out from the goals. Oh, the kick back to her wasn't great. So what can they manufacture now, the Bombers? Is that Nan Scowen going for a handball or coming off? Oh, she's coming off as the kick was not great. She had all that time, but it was only as far as Lambert. As Lambert took a step off the mark, umpire called her to play on. So you switch the kick. As it goes back, this one's Casey. So for Casey's got a fair bit of the ball this quarter. She kicks it on outer wing. And they're doing that short uh, chip kick game plan that works so much for them early on as they continue to do it. But the kick wasn't great and it'll be out of bounds and thrown in on center wing. Almost commentators curse on that one. Absolutely, as Hales was under pressure then from Heil. As the umpire will get ready to throw the football back into play. King versus Nadler in this contest. Both nominate for the ruck. The ball is thrown back into play. Nadler takes it straight out of the ruck. Puts it on the side of the right boot. Was trying to find Fergus. Eyes will take it away here. Lambert spun around, hit the ground. And pass taken back by Focus though for Essendon. Kicks it inside 50. All coming off hands. Close towards the boundary line. Escorted by Bliss. See it over and out in front of the Windy Hill Fitness Centre. Wait for the ball to be thrown back into play. The home of the old Bowls Club. which Used to be originally there in the corner. Back in the old days of Windy Hill, which you might see some vision of if you go on YouTube. Throw the ball back into play again. Behind on this occasion was Fowler. Bombers with an opportunity here. Got through several players and it was away to the left-hand side when they were trying to find uh, Wilson. And will register as a minor score. The first blemish actually to Essendon's scoreboard and only their second score eight minutes into this third term. 1-1-7, Collingwood 4-2-26. Yes, they got the first goal of the game and that's their first score since. It's out of the back half by Bunker. And she kicks it, and it was marked by her teammate. And it's intercepted there by Fru, who kicks inboard. Oh, courageous mark. Oh, it wasn't paid. I don't think she got full of it, and wrapped up in the tackle is Carenti. And it will be balled up only 49 metres outside of Essendon's goal. And it's thrown up, and Nadler just goes bang. McIntosh with advantage. She'll go from 45. Kick it forward. It's off hands and it goes to Stepnell. It'll be a free kick. Directly in front of goals. Now, I'm not a betting man, but if I was, I would... I reckon she'll kick this. It was a bit unfortunate earlier as, uh, as Stepnell goes back to have the shot. Probably on Tana Mary, the ball was actually at the correct height for her, but she jumped about half a second yeah. early yeah. and it went through her hands. If she just delayed that jump, she actually would have swallowed it straight in front. So should steer this one through. Umpire jiggles a bit to the left, but it's through and Essendon kick a goal. Yeah, That's their okay. second of the day and they'll go to 2-1-13 to Collingwood's 4-2-26. Yeah, good kick there and uh, they'll... Essendon will look to build on this, and uh, the, the, behind, the previous behind was their first score for maybe half it's an hour at the most. The um, so, because yeah, they, they got the goal very early in the first term, so yeah, they'll look to build on this and um, try and make the most of the momentum switch. So, I'm part with the football back in the middle of the ground. Ten minutes gone in this third term, and it is a 13-point lead to Collingwood. Umpire looks around, making sure everyone's set in their 666 combination. Throws the football high in the air, and away we go again. Nadler wins out on this occasion. 
Ball falling to the forward there for Fru. Knocked over. In goes McIntosh. it in. Umpire says, holding the football. Free kick going the way of the parties. Jamie Lambert, who else? Lambert with the footy, decides to pull the kick wing for Malloy. Oh, drop the footy. Rare mistake from her. Eugle feeds out the hand pass. Now an opportunity for the Dons as it almost finds Rain with this kick. Unparked underneath it, there was Bill. Drop the footy there. Trying to get in there for the Dons. I think was Stasi can't quite get it out. The umpire will ask for the football back. Between centre and centre half forward for the Bombers. Just a little bit of momentum their way at the moment. Can they make the opportunity of it? Or will the Pies just snuff it out quickly? Here's a quick kick for them off the centre half back line. Going towards the middle of the ground. And Scarm was chasing after it. Picked up by King. Got sandwiched with Hyle coming from behind. And the umpire will blow the whistle and call for a ball up. Match analyst is Elise Collette. Yeah, momentum is definitely moving towards um, Essendon's favour here. I'm just checking my notes here. They, ha they ha restricted Collingwood to no score here. Well, As my point yeah. is about to be... Um, Commentators curses Malloy. 50 just trapped down the throat of Chloe Malloy. Has just missed to the right. I was about to say who else but Chloe, but um, yeah. Don't you hate it when your classmates show you up? <laughs> oh, don't get me started. 4-3, <laughs> Collingwood, Essendon, 2-1, 13. Uh, 11 and a half minutes gone, 13. Staking the kick in. Essendon will look to reset and get their momentum back. Oh, that is a long kick. That went 55 metres. So it's on the outer wing for Essendon. And it'll be wrapped up, ball up. How long was that kick? That was at least 50 metres. I've never seen a girl kick the ball that far. I have. Have you not seen Georgia Hammond's goal from the other leg? Have you not seen Sarah Perkins get onto a torp? Oh, <laughs> shit. Yeah, they're, God, they're good. That was massive as the umpire calls another ball up. Just out, 55 metres out from Collingwood's goal. Can Collingwood get a goal almost against the tide at the moment? As wrapped up there is Kaludi. There'll be another ball up. 60 out from Collingwood's goal. They lead by 14 points. Halfway through the third. There's ball up. Is tapped out by Collingwood. Nan Skirwin has had a pretty good game. But the kick wasn't great and it'll go in the hands of Lee. Haven't called her name too much as she kicks into the outer wing. Kick at the top of the 50 for the Pies. What can they do? It's a mark, is it? Umpire calls play on. As it's kicked out by Nen Scar. And she's done a lot of little sockers out. The ball's just tumbling along the carpet. Ball is wrapped up and umpire will call mine. So we'll reset play near the half-forward flank for the Pies. They lead by 14 points. We've gone more than 13 minutes into this third term. Immediately wrapped up there was Safety Casey. The umpire says the ball's popped out, so it can play on. Eugle got the hand pass away before being dumped into the turf. Maliaris from the right boot, went towards the centre wing. Got away from several players, went over the boundary line and out of bounds. Uh, There's a girl looks down. Like we may have another injury. Let's go back here. It is, is Stepnel? Uh, no, it's Eugle. Eugle. It's because I can see the blonde hair. That is and the tat on the shoulder. That's definitely Courtney Eugle, and she is on the ground in pain. She is in a lot of pain, Courtney Eugle, and in fact the umpires have stopped play. So the clock at the moment's ticking. Even though if they do signal for time on, it can stop the clock. These are the rare occasions that can happen. We're just waiting for umpire's instructions. But Courtney Eugle, legs out, and, uh, and she was rocking back and forward in pain. Kirby Hicks went over to check on her and give her a tap. It's interesting to see what players do. We've got Collingwood in their separate huddles, and Essendon have just got one big huddle. As the is a stretcher being called? The trainer is attending to Courtney Eugle as we speak. <laughs> Score at the moment is 4-3-27, Collingwood, Essendon, 2-1-13. Now, she's standing up, so that's a good sign. But, oh, geez, that is very tender. Trying to... I'm not going to even try and guess of ankle or knee, but she is very, very tender at the moment on her right. Could they potentially, like... She's trying to... Get her, um, get her off on the other side so that they can get the extra player on? Well, that's, that's what I'm saying. I mean... She's trying to walk it off, but if I was the coach, I would say, 
just walk her off the ground on the far side and tell her, look, even if it was just a knock on the end, nah, you're done for the day. It's, you know, we're not going to take the risk. It's not, not worth it. She's taking a very long time to come off the ground. And Jamie Lambert going over to her to give her a tap to say, look... All well, the Essendon it's... girls, there, <coughs> led by McIntosh. They're all coming across to give her a tap. This is their captain, and she is in a lot of pain. Uh, uh, that does not look good. It's not what you want to see. I, I am just hoping, hoping more than anything, knee. that it's not an ACL. I'm just hoping it is something that is painful in the short term, but find out it was just a stinger or something like that, or something that's just a week or two on the sidelines and you're ready to roll again. But Do, we, not... do we reckon it's definitely something on the leg? Whether well, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, a leg it's, it's, it's a leg injury. Limping, it's a leg so... injury, but um, it's just, you know, we're, we're not medical experts. We're not going to try and create false hope or try and tell us something that might be serious that isn't. But um, all we can do is, for those watching via facebook.com forward slash WARF radio is just to show you the vision. And she's taking a long time to um, limp off the ground, being assisted to by the trainers. Courtney Eugle, of course, there were hopes for her to be uh, drafted by the West Coast Eagles. She had gone over during the summer to trial with the Eagles Academy, <laughs> along with Hayley Bullis. Ali, who had had a partial tour of her ACL, they're hoping that she will be back soon and she could be drafted. As she gets clapped off. The applause of the crowd here, which has grown to about 300 people at Windy Hill on this fine Saturday afternoon. But Courtney Eugle, the Essen captain, will certainly not long, no longer be taking part in this match. And as we said, we are just hoping it is more a short term than a long term injury. So, ball resets now after that break. Who will gain momentum off this? Will it be Collingwood? Will it be Essendon? As the ball's not doing too much and it'll be out of bounds and a boundary throw in. So the clock didn't stop during that period. So Interesting be... to see what they do here with that because that was a good four minutes at least. So it'll be thrown back in. Nadler in the ruck up against Alexander. As Nenskow and attacks it pretty hard and just dives on the ball on hands and knees, trying to get something out. She's normally an outside mid, but she's been playing a good inside role today. She had a pretty good game, one of Essendon's standouts today, Nenskow. So it's Nadler who wins a tap against Alexander's Audley. Tries to get the ball, but doesn't. It's kicked away by Alexander into the uh, Doherty direction. And it's pushed out of bounds for a boundary for throwing. So at the moment, the clock is suggesting there's two minutes to go in this uh, third term. As we we'll wait for the ball to be thrown back in. Going up in the ruck, Nadler on this occasion against Sophie Alexander. As the Pigeons watch onto our commentary position. And uh, Escowan will try and dance left, dance right. Go backwards, got rejected. But coming through to pick it up was Maliaris for the Bombers. A kick point works out okay. Hits up a teammate. Collier going for a run. Coming in board. Looking for McIntosh. Got away from her. Slicer will take it away for the pies. Slicer looking for Lambert. Is trying to create some space. Chops Lambert. Drops it. Gets it back again. Lambert goes with a hand pass. Looking for Blecker. Blecker got spun around in a circle by Kendra Hill. Dropped the footy. Umpire said play on. In goes, uh, in goes for the Dons, the player in Heil, who had a second crack at it, might have a third crack at it. Blecker coming back after Heil, jump right over a rodeo style. Ball hit the deck, under pressure is Kirby Hicks, coming after is Livingston. Livingston chasing out the football, Lambert there as well, Livingston! Umpire says that was way too high. You can only do that in WWE wrestling, and unfortunately we're playing a game of Australian football, so that means it's a free kick to the Dons, and they'll kick it out of the back line. Hugging close to the boundary, Mark intercepted. Taken there by Hales, who comes what in board. Clary Malloy says, I'll take on three. And that wasn't smart, as it was taken there by Audley, who tried to get a kick away. Her kick was smothered immediately off the boot. Bombers, though, with a second opportunity. Kicking towards the middle of the ground. Starts to comes out to meet it. Bumped off one player. Then went with a little grubber kick going forward. Trying to find a teammate there. Trying to shrug off one tackle as Collier wants to get going. Kicks into open space. Here comes the cavalry. They're running towards the forward pocket. 35 metres out from goal. The ball will go over the boundary line and out. In some occasions, that's smart, but when there's no time on, maybe not so smart. Yeah, go, going back to that um, to Chloe's mark there, was that touch off the end? Because yeah, I was going to say that looked like a, a strong, easy mark. I don't but think anyone chooses to take on three players like that. 
Especially not someone that's got as many football smarts as Chloe. As there goes the siren. It's one of those tough things there when there's no time on women's football for two things we just saw there. Just immediately what we saw there when Collier went towards the pocket. When there's time on in football, yes, that's the smartest thing to do. Ball goes out of play, it stops. You'd have 30 seconds, reset. Let's think about the set play. But in women's football, because there's no time and on... And there's open space, yeah, kick yeah, it central. Yeah, you, you kill the clock where, yeah. in a way, you, the clock's getting killed. You've just got to maybe take the gamble and kick it to the spot open in front and just back yourself on the foot race. I, but also with no time on, as we saw from the injury there and, and the the cloudiness of... There is technically a way they can stop time on for stretches, etc. But there's the umpire raising their hand and a stretcher required then. And because no stretcher came out, but everyone stopped for five minutes, we lost five minutes of game time. And really, around the rules on time on, somebody's got to step up from the league headquarters and go, we need to write this rule better, particularly around injuries. Hopefully that gets reviewed at the end of the year because that was, a, yeah, as you were saying, a good five minutes that oh. could have... And just as the Essendon more... were gaining momentum too, they've yeah. lost five minutes to try and come back I, I, now. I'd say, okay, if they don't want to do the full-blooded time on, at least bring in A, for goals, obviously, because you lose 30 seconds for a goal. But B, when there's a, a player stops the injury and players are breaking to their huddle, it should be then told by the umpires or whatever, that needs to be a signal where... Normally their time ups, they, they put their hand up. But that's I saw do that, though. But that's technically ignored in women's football because of the no time Ankle. on rule. So, um... So, yeah, Courtney eagle has got ice around the ankle. We can confirm and that is crutches. ice around the right ankle on crutches for Courtney Eugel. Um Going back yeah. to the hand thing for a second, um, I, I swore that the umpire did that too for um, Kelly in the first quarter when um, she came off yeah. with the shoulder. Because the weird thing is the umpire still practice doing the time on when there's no time on, as in that signal, as in to obviously prepare themselves for men's football yeah. and games where there is time on. It's a, it's a habit. You think maybe in women's football, maybe do they have to do a different signal, like a big swooping circle single symbol or, or something different just to go, no, this is serious. We do have to stop the clock. I don't know, but if I'm caught in the Eagle, I'm saying bring out the stretcher, stop the clock so we don't yeah. waste any time. Yeah, because mm -hmm. at the moment, look, the, the game's at the moment not close, but I'm just thinking, let's say we got a final or a game near the end of the season where it's really tight and this is, you know, a matter of who's going to make a final. So I could lose a game or miss out on a final or something like that if mm. if this situation occurs. And it happens regularly where we unfortunately do see a lot of serious injuries yeah. in women's football. Mm. We'll take this opportunity to take a break here at uh, three-quarter time. You're listening to RSN Carnival 2, WARFradio.com and our Facebook live stream. We'll be back in just a moment. Premiership coach Paul Roos talks teamwork, leadership and creating a winning culture. One of the smartest minds in football talks about his life and the lessons he's learned on the next Reckland Sporting Chance Night. If you're in sport or business, come and learn from one of the best. It's on Wednesday, August 14 at the Hoppers Club. Pelham Drive, Hoppers Crossing. Tickets just $25, but bookings are a must. Call 9419-6672 and join Paul Roos. Reckland, including the unincluded. The end of financial year sales have begun at Ratton Mazda, and you don't want to miss it. Get incredible value across all new and demo Mazda, like huge discounts on run-out models, end of financial year bonuses, and drive-away deals across our range of SUVs, utes, sedans, and hatches. So don't miss a deal. Get in first and start your financial year with a brand new car from Brighton Mazda. SUV Central, where excellence costs no more. T's and C's apply. LMCT 10963. Ho, ho, ho! Go, you good thing! It's Christmas in July at the Meadows. Exhilarating greyhound racing, a delicious Christmas buffet, and jumping castles for kids every Saturday night in July. Book now at meadows.org.au need a new car battery, RACV comes to you seven days a week. Book your installation online in just minutes and they'll do the rest. To book, visit racv.com.au slash batteries. There's jumpers, hoodies and tees for you at leaguetees.com.au Leaguetees.com.au is your place for retro footy gear with designs created by local artists that you won't find anywhere else. Plus, their unique range of women's footy tees help raise funds for Indigenous literacy programs. Get online and start shopping today. Leaguetees.com.au Or SN Carnival 2 is the V.
you are listening to the VFL Women's Match of the Day on RSN Carnival 2, also via WARFradio.com, via Facebook.com forward slash WARF Radio for our live video stream and as well on the VFL app. Let's quickly go around the grounds. We've got some scores with Elise Collette. Yeah, two uh, seven-point margins here. Uh, Geelong over the Hawks and Melbourne Uni over Casey. Well, there you go. Melbourne Uni all of a sudden uh, starting to put themselves back into the equation again for the top six after sliding a little bit there. It was them and Casey both locked in uh, seventh and eighth position respectively. And Geelong after a slow start to the season. Geelong building some momentum now and starting to stalk the top six. And Haw that leaves Hawthorne in a bit of an interesting position. I reckon you've got a fight between eight sides to get into the top six. I reckon you've got maybe two. I reckon you've got three that are just about almost locked in. I reckon you've got the Pies, you've got the Tigers, and you've got uh, the Saints that will be there. Yep. And I think out of the rest, it's between five sides for the last three spots. To get us underway for the final term, here's James Trebinos. So it is... Uh, it was Nolder that got us underway for that. I, I, love, I love that pause there. It is... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't my best effort as Rark. <laughs> As the ball kicks it inboard. At least you got there eventually. Oh, slowly but surely. As uh, kick along the way, Collingwood's attack and King tried to pick it up. Was, was that Livingston? No, it was King. Immediately put into the ground there. I'll help you out by Hicks. As it's a fast pace of play to really get uh, things going here for this final turn because we heard Brendan Major at... Uh, Three-quarter time, give a real fired-up speech for the Bombers with their captain on the sidelines with an injury. Stasi hand passes up in the air. George uh, Nascau, and was she held? No, it was Stasi that got dumped afterwards by, by Lambert. Lambert. Yep. So that's the free kick. And Jessica Stasi with the football. Now coming in board. Bounced around awkwardly. Trying to get in there, but was the meat in the sandwich with Spark. Now going in there is uh, Cecilia McIntosh, who is G-O-N-E gone. Umpire says that will be a free kick going the way of the Pies. Better communication uh, there could have meant that um, McIntosh was able to handball it out, but um, unfortunately for them, that was not the case. And guess who? Chloe Malloy's got it. Chloe Malloy with the footy decides to go short, almost gets cut off. Indeed, it does. And that is McIntosh. who goes back to Nanskawa, who uh, kicks it in towards the central corridor. The Bombers trying to take it on. They're going at a frenetic pace, but can they make anything stick? Here comes Stasi now with the football. Kicks into the open space. Could be a foot race on here. Here comes Collier chasing after the football. Can she get to it before the boundary line? She elects to end up going for the Shepherd instead of going for the footy because her teammate was there on the boundary who went for a snap. And unfortunately, from all that excitement, nada, not nothing. Out of bounds <laughs> on the fall by Elizabeth Hosking. Jeez, the build-up was there from the Bombers. If you felt if they kicked that, it was game on. Yeah, they're playing fast. That was the message from the coach at three-quarter time. The ball's over the head of the pony, but it's Lambert who just kicks it forward, a tumbling ball towards Livingston, who picks it up and she can wheel around, but she goes the handball back to Lambert, but it is out of bounds. Both teams playing really fast. Yeah. This is what we want. So it is Collingwood by 14 points early in the last quarter. The umpire will throw this one in. And it's Nadler. Took me only two seconds to say that time. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. And she's up against <laughs> Bell and She gets the tap on this occasion. Almost took it out of the ruck. Actually, she did take it out of the ruck. And she looked for Corenti. Couldn't take the ball. But it's Collingwood who have it. And the mark is taken by Balka. Blecker. Blecker. So the American goes into the center. And I think that's all they got it away. So it's in the center. Big kick away by Stepnell into the forward. It's Stasi. And it is wrapped up and it'll be a ball up. Only 45 meters out from the Bombers goal. They're playing at a ferocious pace you right now. You almost feel like one goal either way could could change the game dramatically like just extend the um extend the pies goal or game on for um from an Essendon perspective so sophie casey gets wrapped up and we will have another ball up yes yeah, the question of petrol tickets being spent and reward for effort as the umpire has the footy back 55 meters out for the bombers goal going to the primary school end and Scarwin does the roving work again. Gets on the outside of her right boot this time around. But parking herself underneath it is Caitlin Lee. Lee with a footy for the Pies. Broadcast side of the ground. Sees a player on. Decides to go in the Fowler direction. Erica Fowler with a footy. 
Standing on the mark there, clapping her hands for the Dons was Nadler as it kicks over her head up the line. And Audley's going to clean up the mess here for the Bombers. She'll take it away. Audley on centre wing. Oh, good kick. Finding Karani who took the play on. Got the kick away before being tackled. But coughed up the footy and went straight down the throat of Sophie Alexander at centre half back. Umpire's blown the whistle. Spotted something behind play. I think Injury. an injured player. So we'll say Alexander to go back to take the kick. And it's another player down. This time it is for the Pies. And she is writhing in pain. I won't be able to tell you the number. Because um, obviously her back's to the ground. And even with the number on the front of the chest, how the position that she's pointed towards the camera um, cannot uh, identify at this stage. Um, just trying to look around to see. She's not holding anything. I think she's holding her head. Maybe it's just a whack across the scone. And just getting up there now. Feeling a little worse for wear. Is the number 15 by look of it. And Erica Fowler. She'll just come from the ground going, oh, jeez, it's going to hurt in the morning. And uh, she'll just come off now as we speak. 15, Erica Fowler. Coming off the ground there for the Pies. At least she's running off, which is a good sign. Alexander take the free kick for the Pies. She kicks it in to the King direction. And she couldn't get the balls. It's hacked in the forward 50 by Audley, who will follow up her effort. And it'll be balled up at the, just the top of... Forward 50 for Essendon. And they're playing some pressure footy and some fast footy to hopefully snatch the win. As Nadler and King are in the ruck. King gets a tap forward. It's on the ground in the pack. And out that was Casey trying to get it away. Couldn't. Lambert's there. And it will be thrown up. With the way Essendon are playing at the moment, it's almost safer to, well, if they've taken the mark, to not play on and try and attack. Because if they go back and take that extra second, it's less likely that they're going to get their kick intercepted. Because if they play on, it's a quick kick, easy intercept. Umpire asks for the footy back. We'll call for another ball up. 60 metres out from the Essendon goal. They trail by 14 points. Six minutes gone in this final term. Medley being caught there is Sean Wilson. Put into the ground. The umpire said thrown into the ground. Sling tackle. Free kick going the way of the Dons as Wilson gets up. Going, ouch. So, Sean Wilson with the footy. Who does she have on? That's the question. She needs to kick to a lead rather than a standing target. She goes towards the hotspot. 45 metres out from goal. Looking for stars. He got away from her. A few players claimed that they were held without it. Umpire said no. Play on. They tried to find Madden who had it momentarily. Then popped out of her hands. Madden goes in one more time. Being caught Maliaris. And the umpire says will ask for the football back. Getting in there for the Pies. Number 25, Michaela Can. Umpire says, uh, let's see the nominated ruck. Let's see if everything's okay with the zone. We have to have five back in your defensive half. He says, it's all good. Let's reset play. Can goes to ground. And the umpire says, let's restart play again. 48 metres out from the Bombers' goal. The Pies 27, the Dons 13. You just have the feeling Essendon are going to score soon with the way they're playing. As Collingwood just... Hack it out of defensive 50. Lambert arrives. Couldn't get the ball. And the tackle there was Nash. As I think it's going to be holding the ball. It is. It will go Essendon's way. And they can attack again. And getting the free kick is Wilson. So Sean Wilson's got a few kicks in. Oh, no. It will go to uh, Ashley Cooper. So, Aloise, Ashley Cooper... Goes short. It go, went over the head to Nan Scarl and she's had a good game, but she didn't have the footy. She got thrown out of the contest as the ball gets away. Only smothered, so it's on the pack. There's Pullerman. Ah. Perot Mary. That is a hard name. It's kicked down to the wing by Collingwood. It's mopped up by Ashley Cooper, who wheels around on the right foot, pl touch play on. So it's Collier, who goes inside 50. Big leap. Was that McIntosh? I think she'll get the... Will she get the free? Player in front uh, gets the Stasi. free Stasi. And 50 metre penalty. 50. Oh. This is a big call. Out. And it was correct because the kind of player, I think, It wasn't on the there. full. Yeah, it didn't throw it back. It just threw the ball onto the ground, which you have to throw it back on the full. So certain goal for Essendon. <laughs> Wowee. What a time.
This could make things very interesting. Now, you cannot miss from here. So, from point blank range, she'll come in, she'll kick the goal, and we've got a game on our hands. Essendon moved to 3 1, 19, Collingwood 4 3, 27. And Pete, you never know. You might get your tip right. Uh, what? Well, I, I suggested Collingwood by 10 points. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> so. it, it is eight points at the moment, but maybe. Could Essendon still, if they have the momentum, Collingwood do have a few class players, though, at least Colette. Yeah, it's, uh, you're, you were talking earlier about um, how you thought it was going to be closer than everyone expected. That is certainly turning out to be the case. But uh, it was it was great work from Essendon, how they were able to find space out wide on the wing and then um, able to kick it back in. And um, it, was, it could be argued that it was a bit of a lucky 50, but um, they made the most of it. King goes to the ruck. We're trying to put it down the throat of Malloy, but the ball bounced away from her. Taken by Fru. Fru goes towards the half-forward flank position. Collier coming out after it. Ball bounced over her head. Perantana Mary has to try and swing around, and that's what she does. She gets on the left boot, goes towards the top of the goal. Square Step. options on here. Spoil from behind. Step having block. to go spin around with Stepnell. Got it out. Opportunity for the Dons is just going away, away, away to the left, and will go over the boundary line and out of bounds. 10 metres around from the left-hand point post, but at least Colette, that's not quite a bad option. Yeah, it, uh, it allows Essendon to, uh, and I guess also Collingwood, to reset and um, just they've just got to try and lock it in their 50 here. Ball to be thrown back into play. You can see panic stations. Malloy's been thrown on the ball. They're concerned about this. Slice so the up in the rack versus Stepnell. Lambert is lurking around nearby. Down the throw to Shea Orley. Had to try and feed out the hand pass. Try to get a snap around the pocket. It's focused towards the top of the goal square. Opportunity here for the Pommers. They can't get it through, though. It will be escorted to safety and one behind. 3-2-20, the Bombers. 4-3-27, the Pies. Game on! With nine minutes remaining in the final term. It's those chaos balls. That Essen doing inside 50. They're really troubling Collingwood at the moment. As Bunker just kicks out of 50. She's had the kicking duties for most of the day. Essen couldn't take the mark. It'll be a boundary throw in 60 metres out from goal. And they are coming. Yeah, and the key thing is, there's still plenty of time. Uh, I can't quite read the clock from here, but about eight minutes, yeah. if I'm wrong. Right. Yeah, about eight, eight minutes wrong. remaining. So Seven yeah, that's points plenty down. Of time. Absolutely plenty of time. So it's Nadler in the ruck. Went to Audley, who sock it away now. Collingwood go forward. Livingston's around. What can she do? She gets. She couldn't get hands on the ball. It's wrapped up in the centre. Umpire will call ball up. And it's what Collingwood need is just to stop play, get some stoppages, and make the clock tick down. Uh, even yeah, one goal their way would make a huge amount of difference for them. It's Essendon attacking at all costs. And Collingwood get something against the tide. Umpire circles around. But he says it's my ball. And he'll throw it up. With only eight minutes exactly remaining on the clock. And we'll reset play. You're on RSN Carnival 2. WARFradio.com. Facebook.com forward slash WARFradio for the live vision. It's all wrapped up immediately. And the umpire is going to ask for the football back. It was Blecker that was caught with the footy. We're looking for another seven-point margin of the day. We've already had two. Exactly. Don't forget, coming up later today, we'll bring you live coverage of the Bulldogs and the Tigers from 3.30pm and a Facebook stream at 3.55pm. Umpire circling, circling, circling. Blows the whistle again. Calls for a ball up. And this time it was Hales with the footy. We'll give it back to the umpire. The Pies happy for the clock to be chewed up. The Bombers need the ball to move quickly to get the momentum back how they had it. Malloy got it off to Lambert. Lambert kicked it long. Trying to put it to the agency of Alexander. Alexander got a dance around at the half forward flank. Puts it in the hot spot. 45 metres out from goal. Ball came off hand. Still in the forward pocket in front of the fitness centre. Don's trying to clean up here. This is Wilson. Close towards the boundary line. One bounce an hour. But because of the last disposal rule, that means it's a free kick to Jamie Lambert. You don't want it on your hands if you're a Bomber supporter. For the Pies, you'd be very happy to have it in Lambert's hands because she is perfect with a footy. And she picks up her intent target. Oh, it's oh, bucking 50 metres. 50 metre oh. penalty for going in the protected zone. Even though, of course, the play didn't go across the mark because they went within five metres. So bucking. Uh, it's a 50 metre penalty that will bring her to about, if the umpire is correct. That was about 20 metres. It really should be about 15, but it's still within range. Bucking. I think that's the ball game. Yeah, that makes it certainly very hard. Uh, much harder for Essendon there. Yes, what cometh, what is taketh away. 
Essendon get a 50-metre penalty, but then it happens at the other end of the ground to balance it out, a 50-metre penalty to the Pies. 13 points the difference, and the Pies, you would suggest, with even six minutes to go, have survived a scare from the Bombers. Oh, I think there's still a little bit of time, but you'd probably think that extra point Collingwood have will be too much. It's a three-kick uh, game, and considering that there hasn't been a big score today, that that will be too much for Essendon. So let's see what they can do. So it's King in the ruck, but Nadler gets a tap, and oh, wow. Chloe Malloy was it straight out of there. Deep inside 50, Livingston. Can she get onto the end of it? No, she couldn't quite. Didn't have the ball there. And it is rushed through. Handy point for Collingwood. Takes away the draw possibility, really. Mm. So, Essen to restart. And a long kick out of 50. Big fly was... Uh, that was uh, Collier. Who couldn't gather. So, the ball is on the 50-meter arc for Collingwood. And this game is pretty much over. With five minutes to go in the final term, one out by King, try to put it down the throat there of Malloy. Hang harassed with a footy there, McFadden. She has to try and go back in again. Hicks wants to offer support, wrapping up uh, her opponent there and scrapping for the football with Livingston. The umpire will ask for the pill back. 25 metres out from the Pies goal, attacking towards the railway end of the ground here at Windy Hill. Umpire throws the football up in the air, and away we go again. Livingston wins the tap. Ball on the deck. Trying to fight hard for it here. Michaela can, but she cannot get it out. And the umpire says, I'll ask for the football back, and we'll go one more time. Also coming up today, we should mention, if you go onto YouTube and search for NT Thunder, you've got the NT Thunder versus Carlton VFL women's game at 4 o'clock. As Lambert. Lambert just dances the way through. Jamie Lambert with a snap, and it looks pretty good. Uh, if that wasn't the nail in the coffin earlier, this is surely it now. Jamie Lambert is a legend, and that is an undeniable fact. And that is game over here, as far as I'm concerned, at Windy Hill. That extends the margin out now to 20 points, and it makes the Pies 6 4 40. Essendon 3 2 20. Match analyst is Elise Collette. Yeah, great kick there from um, Jamie Lambert. And it was, it was it all started with, um, although it wasn't as direct, it all started with that great kick out of the centre from. Um, Chloe Malloy there, and yeah, if, as I was saying before, if it wasn't the nail in the coffin earlier, uh, that goal surely is now. Peter, can you give us uh, your best Rex Hunt, it's over? I'm not even going to try. <laughs> we save it for special occasions, this is not one. So it's McIntosh in the middle, they're still attacking as uh, Stasi goes forward. They might get a goal here, Essendon, as that is... Uh, Collier with the ball and she got wrapped up and it'll be 35 metres out from Essendon's goal. Steph Null nominates for the ruck and she gets the tap on that occasion as it's socket out towards the edge of the 50. Collingwood have the numbers and what a sidestep that was. As she kicks it in board, finding her player in Butte Bucken who kicked that goal off the 50 metre penalty a short time ago. As the players have wrapped up and it will be a ball up in the centre. There's 2 minutes 30 on the clock. Collingwood have kicked away late. And survived the scare from Essendon. Who were within 7 points. With 5 minutes to go. As then Scowan just dives on the ball. It's been good all day. But she's dived on it. So the umpire's going to say that is holding the ball. And the free kick will go Alexander's away. What was that Pretty sure that's Alexander. And she kicks long to the top of the 50. The Livingston off hands. Essendon for the rebound. That was Ashley Cooper who handballed over the top. And that could be holding the ball. But she got it. She had a lot of time to get rid of it. She did. Ashley Cooper again away. Ball on the deck. Hand passed away there was Hosking. And then it's Maliaris who just dribbles it to the top of the 50 and mopped up and taking on two. That is holding the ball. Umpire says no, play on, and we'll say it's a ball up. Taken straight out of her hands according to the umpire, which back in the old days that was called incorrect disposal, as the umpire throws the football high in the air. Nelda punched it forward and Scarwin immediately had it. 
Taken out of her hands, slapped around. Now Blecker for the pies. Kicks it in towards the middle of the ground. Bouncing around. Livingston coming after it. Couldn't quite pick it up. All oh, fights in there for the Dons. Immediately sat upon by King. And the umpire will blow the whistle and call for a ball up. Under a minute to go in this game. Here's your match analyst, and Elise Collette. Yeah, um, great, um, sorry. Did not know where I was going with that sentence. That sounds like me half the time. As the ball is on <laughs> the ground. Most weeks. As the umpire says, uh, that is in the back for a kick, and it's going the way of the Dons. So Essendon, maybe one last while the dice to put a bit more respect on the scoreboard as they kick it long towards and half forward. McIntosh flying through the air, couldn't quite bring oh, it, down. Got it down. Got it back, spun around, got immediately caught by Lee, and the Pies sent it back from whence it came, looking for Lambert. There's Blecker lurking on nearby if they want to try and find oh. her. It goes to Malloy instead, and why would you nuts? Chloe Malloy on centre wing, just bouncing around, killing the clock. Ten seconds to go. And she goes backwards. I was waiting for the boo from the crowd going, come on. As the Pies have it at the halfback flank. They kill the clock. And that is the ball game here at Windy Hill in Essendon. And the Bombers put up a bit of a fight, but the Pies shook up a few cobwebs coming off the bye to run out victors in the end. 6-4-40 to 3-2-20. Let's get immediate impressions from Match analyst Elise Collette and play-by-play -play caller James Strebanos. At times there, it was it was a very close game. I was not expecting it to be that close. Um, kudos to Essendon. They really took it up to Collingwood, but yeah, Collingwood just proving they were uh, just too strong and they're on the top of the ladder for a reason. James Strebanos. Yeah, who would have known what would have happened if there wasn't that 50-metre penalty to Collingwood late in the game. And then Jamie Lambert, she always pops up when you need her. And both of her goals today, the degree of difficulty and the skill level you need to just execute those goals is amazing. So she had another good game and uh, Collingwood uh, deserved that victory. In a moment's time, we're going to go through our better players and play by play and what we thought of both sides today in a bit more detail. But we just want to let those know that are watching by facebook.com forward slash WARF radio. We're about to end our coverage on the Facebook stream. You can rejoin us in two hours from now at 3.55 p.m. Believe it or not, I'm packing up all this equipment into my bag and taking two trains out the Footscray. I'll be with you at 3.55 for a Facebook live stream of the Western Bulldogs versus Richmond Tigers. That's in two hours' time from now. And also at 3.30 p.m., you'll hear the radio coverage on RSN Carnival 2 and Wolf Radio. Our radio coverage is going to continue with a review of this game immediately on the other side of this. Facebook.com uh, viewers, we'll see you in two hours from now. Premiership coach Paul Roos talks teamwork, leadership, and creating a winning culture. One of the smartest minds in football talks about his life and the lessons he's learned on the next Reclick Sporting Chance Night.